Welcome to St. Francis as we gather to celebrate Mass on the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. very welcome as we gather for our celebration of Mass on this 19th Sunday. We welcome those who gathered here within the church. We welcome those who, who are joining us on our stream. We also welcome any visitors who have joined with us here today. We continue our reflections on St. John's Gospel, Chapter 6, in which Jesus speaks of himself today as the bread of life and the living bread. And as we come to celebrate the bread of life, we pray for a deeper awareness of this wonderful gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, coming together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let's pause for a moment to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord to acknowledge our dependence on him. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Nay, almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let's lift our voices now in the song of praise as we proclaim the Gloria. to God in the highest and on earth peace to be
Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call God our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. We make this prayer to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We listen now to the word of God. In the gospel, the Lord describes himself as the bread of life and the living bread. In the first reading of the book of Kings, we hear about Elijah. Elijah is despondent about his ministry and refuses to eat. But he's persuaded by an angel of God to eat, and fortified by this, he's enabled to start afresh, just like we are fortified by the Lord through the Eucharist. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds us that coming because of the Eucharist, we must live in a new way, uh, without bitterness, without rancor, and always, always to be kind. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah went a day's journey into the desert until he came to a broom tree and sat beneath it. He prayed for death, saying, This is enough, O God. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah lay down and fell asleep under the broom tree. But then an angel touched him and ordered him to get up and eat. Elijah looked, and there at his head was a hearth cake and a jug of water. After Elijah ate and drank, he lay down again. But the angel of the Most High came back a second time, touched Elijah, and ordered, get up and eat else the journey will be too long for you. Elijah got up, ate, and drank. Then strengthened by that food, he walked 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God, Horeb. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Taste and see, taste and see that the Lord our God is good, that the Lord our God is good. Taste and see, taste and see. Stand, see that the Lord our God is 
Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Sisters and brothers, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were sealed for the day of redemption. All bitterness, fury, anger, shouting, and reviling must be removed from you, along with malice. And be kind to one another, compassionate, forgiving one another as God has forgiven you in Christ. So be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over for us as a sacred offering to God for a fragrant aroma. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews murmured about Jesus because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? Do we not know his father and mother? Then how can he say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, Stop murmuring among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. 
Not that everyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God, and the one who has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Patrick Main, one of our parishioners who, is, who actually proclaimed the second reading, is studying to be a deacon. He's in his final year of preparation. He'll start his final preparation in a matter of weeks. He's actually in his fifth year because the diocese asked the candidates to do a preparation year before they start their studies. And the wife has to be equally involved in the studies. Patrick uh, first approached me uh, not long after I came here about being a deacon and uh, having discussions with his wife, Maria, I said to her, you really realize the great commitment you're taking, but then I realized that she did because her father, her late father, was one of the first deacons here in our diocese when they were introduced. He ministered mostly to the Spanish-speaking community. So uh, Patrick asked me about giving a reflection and he suggested giving a reflection tomorrow on the gospel, which also speaks about the living bread. And I said, well, perhaps, why not do it on Sunday, uh, give you an opportunity to introduce you to the people, and also give me a break. They're tired listening to me. So I'm very pleased to welcome them here today. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. Over the last weeks, we have been concentrating on the gospel of John, in which Jesus has explained that he is the bread of life. This section of the Gospel of John is called the, the Bread of Life Discourse. The Bread of Life course, of Discourse is seen as a prelude to the Holy Eucharist celebrated this very Mass today. Jesus being the Bread of Life, the Body of Christ, is the Eucharist. In Exodus 16, the Israelites were grumbling in the wilderness because Moses, uh, to, against Moses because they were hungry. Even as they began their journey in the wilderness, they began to hearken back at the Egyptian oppression because at least they were fed there. They were hungry, and that is all that mattered. They were suffering. In response to the grumbling, God rains down bread from heaven to physically sustain the Israelites. Don't we have something in common with the Israelites? Last year, were we not in the wilderness of the COVID virus? Did we not suffer? We lost many freedoms. Many were separated from family and friends for over a year. I personally went eight months without seeing my daughter who lives in LA. That was the longest I'd ever gone without seeing her and being with her in person. I yearned to see my daughter with my own eyes, to hear her laugh in person, but not over the phone or the computer. It's just not the same. My wife and I drove to Santa Clita and met her in a park and sat with her on a bench. My daughter loves us so that she was afraid to infect us with the COVID virus. We didn't hug or even shake hands. But my, but my family's blessed, we are blessed. Many others lost family members and yearned to see and hear their family and friends one more time, but COVID took them too soon. Like the Israelites, we yearn for what we had, and that is all that mattered. As Catholics, did we not also yearn as a community for something special? Weren't we denied something? When the country was shut down, so were our churches. We were hungry for something, and that is all that mattered. We were hungry for the bread of life, the body of Christ, the Eucharist. For a while now, the country has been opening up along with our churches. Perhaps our journey in the wilderness is coming to an end. 
Many people were concerned the Catholics would not come back to Mass because their habit of attending had been broken. Other Catholics knew that could not happen, would not happen, because as a community of Catholics, we yearn for the bread of life, the Eucharist. In fact, people are coming back. We are hungry for, a bread, for the bread of life. We Catholics have a hunger that needs to be satisfied. Jesus has the answer. Jesus said in today's gospel, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. In the Gospel of John, last Sunday, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. We never need to be hungry again. We never need to be thirsty again. We eagerly return to Mass as a community. We want the Eucharist because it is the bread of life, the body of Christ in our lives. We want and need the bread of life to sustain us spiritually. As Pope Francis said, the Eucharist is essential for us. It is Christ who wishes to enter our lives and fill us with his grace. Again, the Eucharist is essential for us. It is Christ who wishes to enter our lives and fill us with his grace. Alleluia. I thank Patrick. Um, one of the things that many people said during the pandemic, which they missed, of course, was not being able to receive the Eucharist. So I like the image that he used of not seeing his daughter for eight months. People are very sympathetic to me. They say sometimes you're not able to see your family, but I only see them once a year anyway, so this year will be two years, and it's only my brother and sister and their family, so it's not the same as, as having your own children. So I can appreciate, if you're not able to see your adult children, how much you would yearn to do so. So I think it's a very apt image for how much we yearned for the Eucharist and how much the, that nourishment by the Lord means to us and how much it sustains us. And uh, hopefully, Patrick, you're right that all those who did come to the Eucharist will return. We haven't still got a full return as yet, but I can appreciate why that is Many people still don't feel safe. Many people still feel a bit wary. And that is why we're continuing to stream the Mass and we'll continue to do so for quite a while. But I appreciate that perhaps people don't feel safe. And actual, in Sacramento County, that's why we're still wearing masks and taking all these precautions because unfortunately the vaccination rate uh, is increasing, but it's not as high as in other parts of the country. And the rate of infection is increasing. So this infection demands that because of our respect for life, that we do continue with these precautionary measures. And as I said in the bulletin last week, we may be fatigued by all of this, but we're not unbowed. Let us now stand and make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn to God in prayer now as we pray for our own needs, for the needs of our brothers and sisters, particularly those in any kind of trial or difficulty, the needs of our communities and our world. Together we pray, O oh God, hear our prayer. O oh God, hear our prayer for the church, for the communities in the eastern part of our diocese, ravaged by wildfires in Greenville, Chester, Westwood, Quincy, and Colfax, and for firefighters and first responders battling those fires. 
For our brothers and sisters, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. For the Japanese people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in these days of remembrance. For our sisters and brothers, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. For Emily and Rory Clancy, and Patricia and Noe Via, who were recently married in our church, and for all couples preparing for marriage this year. For our sisters and brothers, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all who are grieving or ill or in pain, for those grieving the loss of home, livelihood, or life by wildfire, or the coronavirus pandemic. And for those we invite you here and at home to name aloud at this time. We mentioned the Dixie Fire by name, so we pray for all those who are affected by the river fire as well. We pray for all uh, first responders and all uh, who work in the emergency services. I commend to your prayers. Uh, the husband of Pat Pavoni, the lady who works in our parish library, her husband, Robert Siva. Silva is very seriously, uh, gravely ill at this time, and she's asked for prayers. Also commend to your prayers, Gerald Lund, one of our parishioners, whose sister contacted me. She lives in Orange County, and he's seriously ill in hospital as well at this time. So we commend both of them to the Lord, and we pray for healing and strength. For our sisters and brothers, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. For those nearing death, for all who have died from the coronavirus, and for all who have died, especially those we invite you here and at home to name aloud at this time. We pray for all our deceased relatives and friends. For our sisters and brothers, we pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, bread of life, source of courage and hope, we offer you these spoken prayers and the intentions we carry in our hearts. Make us mindful of those who hunger for food and attention, for work and dignity. We make these and all our prayers to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We've reintroduced taking up collections in the church Collectors will pass among you with a basket. The basket is lined with plastic for your protection. We ask you as you place your donations in the basket to not actually touch the basket, just drop your donation into it. I'd like to thank all those who continue to send us their donations either through the mail, direct to our bank account, or through online payments. I realize this is a very difficult time for many people, financially as well as otherwise, so I'd like to uh, just let you know of our appreciation for your continued generosity. We rejoice that the Olympics have completed successfully in Japan, and we congratulate all who have uh, been, uh, have achieved success, or even as the Olympics say, all those who have participated as well to take part is equally as important. The United States is top of the medal league I saw today, followed by China, Russia, and also Great Britain. And uh, I was watching BBC uh, World News early this morning, and they were talking about the end of the uh, Olympics, and they were talking about the success of the Great Britain team. And for someone like me who's Irish, if you look at all the Irish names who are of Irish last names of those who are competing for Great Britain, because our histories have been so intertwined for so long. But also, they saw, showed a, flax, a picture of a girl wearing a green tracksuit. So I said, I wonder what happened. So it was an Irish female boxer, Kelly Harrington, won a gold medal this morning. Um, I have mixed feelings about boxing for anybody, but particularly for a female boxing, I must admit. But anyway will take our success where they come. She's the second Irish boxer. Another Irish boxer called uh, Katie Taylor won a gold medal in London in 2012. Ireland just won two gold medals, one for rowing, and uh, they always have uh, 
success in boxing, usually the men, not necessarily gold medals. I think they won some other bronze medals as well. But as I say, it's the taking part that is important. And of course, this, it was, we were so, so much apprehension and worry about these Olympics, particularly in the middle of this COVID pandemic. So we are, uh, we are glad that they have concluded successfully. We mentioned Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the prayers of the faithful. That's to remember that on August 6th and August 9th, 1945, the atomic bombs were dropped on those cities. This was to bring the war in the Pacific to an end, but we recognize that there was tremendous loss of life. But uh, also this week, we have further reminders of that conflagration that tomorrow we will celebrate the feast of St. Teresa Benedicta, perhaps better known to people as Edith Stein. Edith Stein was a Jewish girl who was born in Germany in 1893. She, uh, she and her sister, uh, to the dismay of their parents, did not have any religious views when they were young. Uh, Edith Stein was very much uh, influenced by Edmund Husserl, who was the founder of the philosophy known as, phenom as Phenomenalism. Uh, and uh, something that influenced Pope John Paul II very much as well too, but she was converted in the 1930s to Christianity. Both she and her blood sister joined a Carmelite convent in Germany because with the rise of the Nazis, the sisters thought it would be better for her to go to a convent in the Netherlands. But in 1942, the people of the Netherlands revolted against the Nazis and in, uh, in an act of reprisal, they rounded up everybody of Jewish birth. It didn't matter whether they were converted to Christianity or not. And amongst them was Edith Stein, whose religious name was, Saint Teresa, was uh, Sister Teresa Benedicta. And both her and her sister perished in uh, Auschwitz about a year later. She was canonized by Pope John Paul II in the early 2000s. And he also declared her to be one of the patrons of Europe. On Saturday, we will celebrate the feast of um, St. Maximilian Kolbe. He was a Franciscan conventual uh, who died also in Auschwitz. Some of the prisoners tried to escape, and in retaliation, the Germans picked seven prisoners who, would, they, would, uh, who they would leave to starve to, die, to death. Uh, and uh, Maximilian Kolbe came forward, stepped forward, and said he would replace one man who was the father of a number of children. And he also said, I am old, he is young, it's better for me to die. Um, he was old, I always smile when I hear that, because he described himself as old, but he was only 47 years of age. But anyway, subsequently he and the other prisoners died. He was also canonized by Pope John Paul II. So all of these events remind us of just how uh, human beings can be. So man, human, human beings, in. Um, can face in humanity to one another, and we pray for the continued peace, reconciliation, and we also pray, as Pope, John, Pope Paul VI said, as he addressed the United Nations, war no more, no more war.
Stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Till you come again Until you 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Granted, we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and St. Clare, St. Dominic, whose feast we celebrate today, our own patron saints, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice for our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please to confirm in faith and charity your program, Church on Earth, which our servant Francis, our Pope, Jaime, our Bishop, Bishop Wiggins, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our to heart of brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. We continue to pray for Ted Espinosa, who died recently. We ask you, Lord, to give him and all the dead kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, who you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say the prayer the Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. So without making physical contact, let's turn to one another and wish each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. One of the things people most missed during the pandemic, as Patrick said to us, was being able to receive the Eucharist. You may be seated. So for those who are watching us on our stream, there has been a long tradition of what's called spiritual communion in the church. In former times, people had to fast for much longer periods. They may have had to travel to church uh, without transport and it may be quite a while before they go home. So they did not always to eat. They did not always receive communion every time they came to Mass, but there was a tradition of what's called an act, saying a prayer of spiritual communion. So we'll now say this prayer together. This prayer is on the screens for those who are watching us on stream, and it's also on your liturgy sheets. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And for those of you who have not been with us here in the church since we resumed uh, in person celebration, I'll just speak to you for a moment about how we will distribute communion. The minister, Ron, and myself will go around the seats and distribute communion, so there's no need for you to uh, move. If you don't wish to receive the Eucharist, just place your hands like that, and we will give you a blessing instead.
Even in Antiphon gives us the words of the Lord, the bread that I would give us, the Lord is my flesh for the life of the world. Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful gift of the Eucharist. We pray you may be praised, adored, and glorified forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, to confirm us in the light of your truth. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I mentioned some of the saints we'll celebrate this week, but we'll celebrate one that's very important in the Franciscan tradition, St. Clair, the Feast of St. Clair, is this coming Wednesday, August 11th. But on the Tuesday evening, uh, we will have a tradition which was started on before the death of St. Francis when he invited the brothers to come around his bed and pray with him. It's called the Transitus. This is also observed with regard to St. Clair. So the transitive service, will take place this coming Tuesday, August 10th, and this will be a service of prayer, scripture, music, and reflection. And this service will be held actually outdoors in the um, courtyard of the parish center across the road. Mass and social distancing will be observed. It's actually very appropriate with the, with the theology of both St. Francis and St. Clair to take, have this service actually over in the courtyard rather than in the church. I mentioned St. Dominic in the Eucharistic prayer. Today, August 8th, would normally be the feast of St. Dominic. Uh, St. Dominic, or Domingo de Guzman, was the founder of the Dominican congregation. They were founded at the same time as the Franciscans. The three great medieval congregations of friars are the Carmelites, the Dominicans, and the Franciscans. And the, Francis those, the Dominicans, of course, and St. Dominic are very much associated with promotion of the rosary. In the second reading today, uh, St. Paul urges us to set aside all bitterness uh, and malice when we come to Mass, but always to be kind. And I was reminded, actually, of something that I saw in an interview with the late uh, Princess Grace of Monaco that was recorded very shortly before her tragic death. And she was been interviewed by P.R. Salinger, the man who was so associated with President uh, John F. Kennedy. And at the end of the program, he asked her, how would she like to be remembered? Which was kind of unusual for asking somebody who was just 51, I think, at the time, with that question. So she didn't say she'd like to be remembered, either as a movie star or as a princess. She said, I would like to be remembered as a good and kind person. And that's the most important legacy that we can leave, is to be a good and kind person. I was very fortunate to meet her just before she died. Um, I was very young at the time, but I had, in college, I had a part-time job in a five-star hotel in Dublin, and she and her husband came to a restaurant in that hotel, and I used to do the night desk, so it was my job, even at that young age, to go and thank these celebrities and accompany them out to their cars afterwards, and she was a very gracious person. She was very uh, suitably named with Princess Grace, but she was a very grace graceful person, and gracious in her manner. We in Ireland regarded her as Irish because uh, her father was Irish, her mother was German, but she always emphasized her Irish heritage. She was a frequent visitor to Ireland, and she said the greatest gift that her Irish ancestors gave her was the gift of faith. So, as I say, I remember her because of that very lovely statement about being kind and being good, uh, something that we should all hope to achieve as well, too. So, I thank all of you who took part in the Mass, particularly thanks to all who assisted in any special way. I hope you're not too overcome by the smoke from the fires. We keep all those who are affected by these fires, of course, in our prayers. I hope that you have a, good, a wonderful day and a great week. And before Mass, uh, we had, I thank Patrick, 
Boris homily, but before Mass, a man told me that he's visiting from Florida, and he, he was together with his wife, and he is a deacon in a diocese in Florida. I think he said St. Petersburg. So if you just put your hand up there, we'll, we'll identify you. There they are there. So very, you're very welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you for your service to the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's pray now for God's blessing. May the peace of Christ, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds, the knowledge and love of God, and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Mighty God bless and protect you all, the Father, the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Father has asked us to invoke the intercession of the Blessed Mother at this time for an end to this pandemic. We pray for those affected by the fires. We also pray for his continued recuperation from his recent surgery, as we say the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly to you, O Virgin, O Virgins, my mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions. In your mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Our Lady is patron of the United States, Mary Immaculate, pray for us. Our Lady is patron of the Americas and the Venerable Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. All angels and saints, pray for us. Our celebration is coming to an end. Let's prepare now to go with the peace of Christ, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Peace be to God.